Hey guys, welcome to Wine Diplomat. I'm Eureka and today we are going to talk about a wine that got uh, a particular rating and I don't know what that is so we are going to try that wine and see if I think uh, the wine is up to the rating. So what's fun is we've done this in the past where we bought a wine just because of the high rating that it got but now we're going to switch it up where I don't know, I all I know is that it is a Cabernet Savion but I don't know where it's from in the world, I don't know who made it, and I definitely do not know what the score was, but I do know that it was rated. So I'm going to try the wine, tell you what I think about it, then we're going to see what the critics said about it, and we'll compare notes and see uh, if I agree, disagree, or, or what I think the differences are. So today, uh, we will be working with Cabernet Sauvignon, but I, again, do not know where it's from, so let's just dive into it. Uh, well, before, while I'm grabbing this glass here, if you could do something for us here, hit that little like button, hit that subscribe button, so that every single week that we put this stuff out, you get it immediately in your inbox. You get notified immediately when it's in there. So take the time, it takes a second, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and cheers to you. So let's take a look. Okay. Oh, look at this. Deep, dark. I mean, completely opaque. I mean, this thing is, you cannot see through this thing. Look at this. This is like almost pitch black. It is a deep, dark purple. So I'm thinking just on sight, it's new world and not old world. So like new world meaning like Argentina, America. Um, that's kind of where I'm thinking just based on looks alone. We'll swirl it around to see. If I've got thick, viscous legs. And it does, but it doesn't stand out as like high or super high alcohol. So let's... Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Big plums. Blackberry. Black cherry. Like deep. Dark. So, so it looks thick, it looks, you know, full-bodied. It smells like it is not, uh, again, it smells New World. It isn't just like balanced and effervescent. No, this thing is like bold. It, it is fruit jumping out of the glass here, all right. Okay, and that's confirmed. I'm going to dig back in here because I took the one sip. The acidity is on my tongue here. Let's dig back in. Mm. I definitely think this is a new world. It's got maybe, maybe more alcohol than I thought initially. It didn't. It didn't really smell real hot, and I didn't see big, thick legs, right, the, the teardrops dripping down the glass, although they are there now that I think about it, but I think this is a little he he uh, higher elevated alcohol, and I think that this has maybe a little bit of sugar, a little higher than I would think if it were like Bordeaux from Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Spain or France. But what do I think about this wine? I think it's a pretty good wine. I, I don't think it's very expensive. I don't think it's very high end. Although, it might be one of these wines that's like $20 that tastes more like a $40 wine. But it just doesn't have that lingering finish at the, at the end of it. It's almost like it's hitting you over the head really, really fast fruit forward big plums blackberry black cherry but there isn't a lot of nuance it hits you with the fruit but that's about it there's no tertiary like there's not cigar box or tobacco or um there's really no like earthy flavors i just taste fruit 
in a good way. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to bash this. I just think this is like a... All right, so I, I would rate, oh God, I would rate this wine out of 100 points. Uh, I'd probably say this is like, like a 90, a, you know, like a 90, 91, I would think, because, it, it, and if I think this is an American wine, it's probably California, but the deep plums and blackberries, black cherry, they don't really tell me like Napa or Sonoma. I think if this is anything from California, it's probably Paso Robles. But uh, I definitely don't think it's Spain. I don't think it's France. I think it's America. Little bit of, a little bit of fruit on it, but not too much. Like I would drink this wine by itself it doesn't need food but it would go it would go well with steaks and stuff like that but I, see i think it's fruity enough that i would be doing like barbecue i would be doing you know pizzas i would be doing anything that's got those like maybe a little bit of sugar in the sauce the red sauce of a marinara or a or the barbecue right um with that brown sugar and anything this would go really well with that although the acidity would cut through creams and cheeses and stuff like that but this is just, this is like a Netflix and chill wine too. You know, you just hang out, drink this by itself. It's fruity enough. You don't really need food. And to be honest, a lot of people aren't drinking and eating at the same time. So is it fine wine? I don't think so. Is it good wine? I'd give it a 90 out of a hundred. I think that's a solid, solid score. Um, but let's see if I'm, uh, if I'm on the right track. So uh, let's see what the critics thought of this wine and finally we will reveal what wine we're drinking so cheers the aromas bring immediate appeal with notes of cherry raspberry black licorice and barrel spice the palate brings jammy fruit flavors it's a ripe red fruited style but also brings some freshness that keeps it balanced it is a surefire crowd pleaser. 89 points, wine enthusiast. All right, 89 points. And 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 they uh, they pegged a couple different fruits than I did. I I I'm I'm not picking up the raspberry, the tartness, like the the acidity and the tartness. I'm not getting a lot of. I get I get more deeper, darker fruit, but. Hey, that's, that's the great thing is we all taste this stuff differently. So Josh, my friend, um, let's bring on the wine. Let's see what the wine is. And they said 89 points. I said 90 points. That's about the same. 89, I don't think is that bad. I mean, uh, okay. So in the world of wine as everyone's looking for a hundred point wine, but, uh, I mean, 90 points is a pretty good wine. And let's see what this is and what we paid for it. This wine is Chateau Saint Michel Cabernet Savion from Columbia Valley in Washington. Okay, so I thought it was America, but I thought it was going to be California, not Washington. This is pretty cool though. So Chateau Saint Michel has been. Uh, it's one of the bigger names. It's one of the bigger brands in Washington. And, uh, man, I dig it. To be fair, uh, I don't know if I would have bought this myself if I would have walked in and, and said, oh, Chateau St. Michel. Because this is, I don't know, $15.99, $14.99, depending on what retailer you're going to. Um, Chateau St. Michel, though, is, is definitely one of the bigger national chains. You can get it at pretty much every grocery store. You should be able to get it at Total Wine or ABC if, if you have one of those in your local area. Um, this is surprising. Uh, on here, it says 13.5% alcohol. If we look on the back label here, um, it will have your uh, alcohol content. But 13.5% uh, alcohol, so maybe a little, pretty average. It's kind of what I picked up. Um, they're saying on the back here that they're 
um, blending winemaking techniques for a uh, new world fruit intensity with an elegant old world style. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I, sure. I, I think it's, it's fruity. It's new world all the way. Um, I mean, hell, if I could find right bank Bordeaux from like St. Emilion that tasted like this consistently, I'd probably just buy that instead of this. But, um, for 15 bucks, for uh, Columbia Valley wine that you could probably go get at a Winn Dixie or a or a Publix or something, yeah, man, I'd put this on the list. I think I would recommend this. I th- like I said, ninety points out of a hundred. It's not perfect. It's not earth shattering. It's not gonna change the way you feel about wine. But uh, if you need a solid American non California cab for fifteen bucks, yeah, man, I think you could do a lot worse than than this Chateau Saint Michel. So. I think we were both kind of spot on. Um, I, I think that this would be a good wine to just have by itself. You could do it with food. You could do it by itself. It's not going to be a million dollars, and I can't wait to drink the rest of this class. So uh, if you could do one thing for us here before we, we fill up our glasses to cheers to you and get out of here, again, it takes one second. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button so that every single week that we provide you with cool content about wine that you might have overlooked. I know I would have overlooked this. I would probably have never bought this. Um, But thankfully, my wife and Josh, who are here, they grabbed this wine. And I'm glad I did because I just learned something. That I I would have wine snobbed this thing and I would have never bought it. But now that I've had it, if I'm in a restaurant and this is the only thing that they have, Sure, why not? I would buy this. So from all of us here at The Wine Diplomat, we say thank you for taking time out of your day to to listen to us and grab a glass. Tell me what you think in the comments. Am I wrong? Is this horrible? Is this the worst wine you've ever had? Is this the wine that made you love Columbia Valley? Let us know in the comments right now. And if there's any ideas you have, what do you want to see on this channel? Just hit us up. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Give us a comment. We love you. You're awesome. Cheers to you and everybody. And once again, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week. You know what, Steve? I think of all that I've accomplished, and I appreciate it, man. I I think... I think we need more Blue's Clues.